Right. Well, thank you, Dr. Hennerid, for allowing this opportunity to present to you on our controller that we developed. Um, we developed a controller that controls the temperature of a nanowire, which relates to uh, phase change memory, which we'll do a little explaining here. Um, Michael Stoddard will be doing his PhD here at BYU uh, concerning phase change memory materials um, as far as memory storage and different applications of that. So he was the, the, the expert uh, in the subject matter. Um, and uh, you see we've got pictures of phones because uh, flash memory uh, is what this relates to um, is basically these nanowires will be kind of a, a new generation of, of memory um, from the current semiconductors rather we're going to use phase change properties. Uh, so getting into it, uh, the phase change memory material, uh, why this is interesting is because it has the potential for a non-volatile uh, material meaning that you don't have, it doesn't, you don't have to supply current to maintain the memory. Um, you set the memory uh, to, you know, one, one or zero and it will hold it indefinitely. Um, it's also high speed, you know, nanoseconds, 10 nanoseconds, um, and also very reliable because once these, the phase has been met, it'll hold that phase for a very long period of time. Um, and so uh, here our, our graph here um, is of a material called GST, which is a uh, germanium antimony and tellurium uh, compound um, and it undergoes a solid state phase change uh, around 160 degrees Celsius uh, and so this is a this is a logarithmic graph here we have a log scale scale on the y-axis uh, and so as you increase the temperature uh, it's logarithmic linear there and then you reach the phase change point right here where you have a sharp decrease in the resistivity of the material. Um, and then, you know, once again, it returns to the same pattern as before. Um, and so uh, this phenomenon has been modeled in uh, you know, these equations and this model are from various papers. Uh, and there's lots of different materials, but we chose to make a controller of GST, which is one of the more common ones. Um, and our, so our controller, our, this is our first principal model here. Um, and it uh, has two terms. It has our power term, um, with the recess resistance as a function of temperature, which relates to that graph. And then as well, you have a conduction term away from the nanowire. These nanowires, which are, you know, 10, 20 nanometers long, um, are embedded in, you know, silicon. And so the heat that is generated is conducted away. S is a shape factor for the, the cylindrical shape inside of an indefinite uh, area. Um, and so uh, that's the, uh, you know, nonlinear model we have uh, because it has that logarithmic, a stepwise logarithmic function in it. Um, and so we are attempting to control that um, so we can set the temperature of these nanowires, which changes the resistance, which then will allow the memory to read as, you know, a one or zero depending on um, what temperature it got to. And not only what temperature it got to, if you bring it up to, say, 300 degrees Celsius, when you cool it back down, if you cool it slowly, and uh, you know, under controlled conditions, you cool it slowly, that phase will, will be maintained. Um, and so that is what we're interested in. It's getting quickly, like, you know, in a few nanoseconds, up to a point above the phase change, and then at approximately, you know, 10 degrees per nanosecond or so, cool it back down to the ambient temperature, uh, you'll achieve, you'll be able to hold that phase state with that set resistance, and uh, the computer will then be able to read the resistivity of that nanowire and uh, tell you whether you know that's a one or zero on the data scale. So as Phil mentioned, we're on the nanoscale side of things, on the cooling and on the heating. And because of that, our tuning parameters that we developed for our PI controller um, are on a f are fairly large magnitude. And so for the, the KI parameter that we had, we have 50,000 nanoamps per degree Celsius. And the tau I parameter, we have 0 0.0001 seconds. Um, and so, because of the nonlinear linear nature of this, we ended up developing a S function in MATLAB to be able to convert the current into a temperature and be able to control that as we control the current. And so we have developed in here, we have the set point up here. We also have the ramp because after the 10 um, nanoseconds of heating that we wanted, it also then has to start to cool at a certain rate, and so that ramp is designed to 
automatically set as soon as we reach the set point to begin that cooling process at the desired rate of cooling. Um, and so kind of the the key controller response that we're looking for is this shape right here on the top graph. We want the very fast rise time with no overshoot and no damping ratio. And then as soon as we reach that 10 nanosecond mark, we want it to cool at 10 degrees per nanosecond. And then at, once it gets to a certain point, it can cool slower than that, which is what you see right in this region, is it gets cool enough that the conduction term no longer, or the, the current is no longer applied and it's just purely conduction related and it just takes a little bit of time to reach that ambient temperature and then we also had um, some, a disturbance variable in there um, so something further that we're looking at and that we wanted to attempt to tackle in this project though um, it wasn't quite in the scope of what we could handle at this time and Michael continue um, looking at this is one of the disturbance variables is the surrounding glass temperature. As you get, you know, thousands and millions of these tubes next to each other, there could be some disturbances of the wires around them. And so we did a few step tests of potential changes in the disturbance variable. And so we had some pretty drastic changes here. And you can see there's almost no change in the cooling rate which is exactly what we need. We need that cooling rate to be maintained exactly where it was. And so that disturbance variable has some um, potential limitations. And then the other limitation that we had is our, our current. It has a, a capacity of 50,000 nanoamps. Uh, 500 milliamps, right? Right, 50, uh, microamps. Mic yeah. Five, 50 microamps. Um, and so, so that's kind of the, the key things that we were looking at is kind of we wanted to make sure that the cooling and the heating had the proper rates regardless of the um, disturbance variable and so and that was that was the project that we worked on and obviously this has some further development that needs to to go into uh, um, in order to make it a more large scale for something like your phone or your computer that will hopefully be able to increase the capacity and, and the speed of the processes that we have since even today my phone sometimes I feel like it's too slow despite how fast it's gotten how fast my computer's gotten there are times where I still say it's too slow and so there's still some room for that improvement and that's what this project was for